When it comes to motion graphics, there's really a million different things that can help you make cool animations. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you a few new tricks that I've been implementing in my work in Blender. First, I'm gonna show you how to procedurally create the animated blue lines you're seeing in this animation. This one's my favorite. I figured out a brand new way to create a looping animation using particles and geometry nodes, and it's so cool. Next, I'm gonna show you how to create a little bit more procedural control over your screens or your LED screens, TV screens, whatever you're using in your environments. I'm gonna show you how subsurface can elevate your animations, and I'm gonna demo how using geometry nodes gives you so many more possibilities when creating 3D text. After that, I'm gonna show you why using real objects in your motion graphics is the best way to elevate your animations. And lastly, I'm gonna show you how to get those particles in your geometry node scenes to stop touching. Quite a few of these sections actually have their own videos on my channel dedicated to those ideas. I'll be linking those in the descriptions and you can check out the chapters here in the video. Let's get into it. Let me show you how to create the blue blinking lights that you're seeing in this animation right here. First thing you're going to need is some geometry with displacement on it. Open up a new window and switch it over to the shader editor. Let's give it a new material and put a mix shader right there and get a emission node for the bottom socket. First, we need to differentiate the two of these. I'm gonna make this metallic and give it a dark color and give this up here a color ramp. Now go ahead and get a wave texture and this is gonna create all of the shapes that we're gonna need for this. And let's switch this over to the material preview window. So the lines are going this way. We need to switch this over to Z to get that look. Switch linear over to constant and then just barely bring it in to get those lines. I'm gonna scale it up to right about here. And now the actual animation is gonna happen on the color socket. So let's go ahead and get this color ramp, bring this to the middle, plug it in and switch to whatever color we want to use. And let's also take our wave texture, duplicate it and plug it right into the color ramp. And the fun isn't gonna start until we bring up this the brightness here and bring down the scale here and once we play with the phase, you're gonna get that really cool animation. If you don't want this to be black, what you can do is just copy the color here and then just make it significantly darker and you get a much more interesting looking animation. If you bring it up, you'll get a different effect here going like that and it's really, really useful to add some flair and some interesting movement in your motion graphics. Did you know that you can use video files the same exact way that you use image textures in Blender? On the first version of this animation, I just had the emoji faces staying still and I was happy with the animation until I realized I could take a lot more faces, animate them together and then use those video files and have the actual faces moving while my camera's going through. It wasn't really heavy for the computer to be able to process that and it made the animation so much more interesting in the end. So I've made tons of different looping animations on this channel using particles and last week I figured out a new way to make a looping animation using particles. Let me show you what it does. So here's the concept. As my camera is moving backwards, particles are scaling in and scaling out as they move forward, and that animation loops in a seamless loop. How do you do that? Let me show you. First, let's go ahead and set up our geometry node system. So we'll go here to geometry nodes, get a, just a random object, click new, and let's go ahead and get in a cube. Go ahead and get a cube, scale it by 10, and add these two nodes to get this right here. Then go ahead and instance on points and an icosphere, and then you can just scale these guys down a little bit. And I'm gonna bring my density down so we have a recognizable pattern really quick. Go ahead and put a transform geometry right here. We're gonna need, we're going to need this to be able to move our particle system. Now, with the node wrangler add-on enabled, we're gonna hit Control Shift D here, Control Shift D here, and join them all with a join geometry right here. Now really quickly before we continue on this idea, I have a full project dedicated to this looping concept on my Patreon with several tutorials showing how far you can take this and actually the nitty gritty behind why this loops, why this works, and why this is useful in a motion graphics context. If you wanna check that out, that is available right now on my Patreon under the scaling project. Lots of really cool things, you can check that out linked in the description. Now since this guy is, since the cube is scaled by 10 here on the Y, we're gonna have him on the negative 10 and have him on the positive 10. We've now tiled our particle system. Go ahead and import an empty into your scene, drag it into geometry nodes and copy my nodes right here with a mesh line with a count of one, a geometry proximity set to points and a map range with these settings right here. It will create this system where you can kind of scale in and scale out your objects and with this empty, you can move it around to actually create this effect. Now all you need to do is take the empty, start it on the negative five and animate it to the positive five. 
Now all that's left to do is parent the camera to the empty and you can watch once this timeline restarts, you'll see it is a perfectly seamless loop of objects scaling in and scaling out. And this is a really powerful trick to make motion like this and actually get it to loop in a seamless way. Again, if you wanna check out the full project with all the tutorials, you can check that out on my Patreon. Amongst so much more motion graphics tutorials, my Patreon is dedicated to motion design. If you're interested in that, that's a really great place to support what I'm doing and learn a lot of really cool things. If you're making any type of screen in Blender like computer screens, LED screens, TV screens, let me show you how to add more control to them so when you make them brighter, you're not actually blowing out the image, but you're allowing the screen to still illuminate the scene. I'm just gonna get a regular plane here in this scene and apply any video to it. So what you're gonna wanna do is get a new principled, delete the principled and get two emission nodes. So we'll take him, duplicate him and add them to a mix shader node. Plug it here plug it here, and let's also get a video to plug into these. So hit Control T and click Open. I'm gonna select a video here and also plug that into the other emission node. Now let's go ahead and see how this looks in cycles. Specify your frames, turn on these, and you have your video playing. Let's get a light path node and use is camera ray. Now this top emission node will actually control how bright the scene is affected by your video and the bottom node will actually control the brightness of the visual aspect of the video. So you can control this on your own and control this on your own. And it adds so much useful control when playing with video screens. When you're making motion graphics, you're using a lot of simple materials and simple models, but don't forget to try out subsurface. It's such a simple slider to turn on, add a value of one to all of the values, and then you could just play with that scale to to really give it a little bit of extra detail. I took this scene from looking like this to looking like this, just from switching them all to subsurface. It's just a little detail, but it really makes them look really cool and takes simple surfaces to something a little bit more interesting. If you haven't tried creating 3D text in geometry nodes, I highly recommend it. Let me show you an example here. First, let's go ahead and get the string to curves node. This is the text node and go ahead and just type in whatever word you want to use. Now we can just go ahead and extrude that. And then with a few nodes, you can create a wireframe out of that extruded mesh. Now you have a lot of points you can play with to add some cool things. So we're just gonna go ahead and add some points to all of those edges and add a cube to each of those edges. Then we can go ahead and bring that original geometry back to fill in the front and the back to make it look nice and readable. After that, just go ahead and throw in whatever materials you wanna use. And what's great about geometry nodes is it's entirely procedural. So you can take that text and go back and change it to whatever you want it to say. And at this point, it's practically a tool where you can create really cool presets. And uh, not to bombard you guys again, but on Patreon, there is a really big project on Geometry Nodes text. I'm just saying, there's some cool stuff there. I don't wanna bombard you guys, but. My next tip is use real objects in your motion graphics rather than using simple primitives or just simple objects in your motion. In this example, I was trying to figure out this technique and make something really cool from it. And this is where I was at at the moment with it. But instead of using cylinders that were going in and out, I decided to opt for real light bulbs. And I took it there and had them blink around. And it went from being kind of a simple, cool MoGraph setup to being one of my favorite animations I've made in a really long time. And as I've been looking around in the motion graphics community, I've been seeing this a lot more where we're taking simple motion, but adding really interesting real objects like the container in this animation. And what's great about it is you can make some really simple things, throw real objects on it, and it actually will take your motion graphics to the next level, adding more interest and something recognizable for the viewer. When creating particle systems in geometry nodes, you're gonna have a lot of intersection and it can get really frustrating even if you're playing with the seed value to try to get away from some of it. Let me show you how to prevent intersection with your particles. If you wanna follow along, just go ahead and copy these nodes right here. I'm gonna go ahead and highlight these guys, move them over and get a merge by distance node. If you throw it right here, what it's gonna do is say, hey, I only want my instances to get only so close to each other. And once you kind of massage this distance right here, it's gonna start preventing intersection in your particles. And it's about 95% effective. And you can go ahead and maybe bring your particles a little bit smaller to prevent a little bit of that. But as you can see, little to no intersection whatsoever. And that's because we have this merge by distance node really helping us out and just place it right after the distribute points and volume node. So there you go. Those are some of the tips and tricks that I've been using in my motion graphics 
lately, and if you are a regular viewer of the channel, you might have recognized a couple of them. So what I'm doing now is taking a big collection of some of my past videos, compiling some of my favorite tricks into one video so you can kind of go back and binge through and maybe come up with some really cool ideas for yourself. It's a format that I'm trying, so let me know if you guys like it. I think it's really fun and it really helps me kind of keep everything because I do go back on my channel sometimes and try to remember different things and having everything compiled um, for myself is really useful. So hopefully you like it as well. Um, again, I mentioned Patreon a few times in this video and I've also been putting a lot of work into the Patreon. If you'd like a way to support what I'm doing and help me continue doing this full time, Patreon is the best place to do it. It's a really great place where I can actually give back more to you guys that are really looking to learn some cool stuff and I have a lot of fun on there. So if you wanna check out the Patreon, check that out, that is linked in the description. And um, yeah, that's it. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next tutorial.